When you first sign in to K6 Cloud, you'll see something like this. Today, we're going to talk about how to create your first test without scripting at all. To do that, let's click on create a new test here on the side, click here to start building. And this is the test builder. For right now, let's just add a request manually. So we'll click on the request button there and we can see that there's an HTTP get request that's already been created for us. And I'm just going to call this home. Now for this one, I'm going to be testing a test application. This is a demo website. So I'm going to copy the URL for this site, head back over to K6 Cloud and paste that in. One thing that we might want to add here is a check. I want to add a check for text that's within the response. I need to click add new check here and then perhaps I'll click body. Now I want it to contain a certain string. Let's go back to the app and I'm just going to copy this phrase and head back to the app and paste that in there. Back to the middle part here, it says a sleep of one second will be added automatically, but we can also change that by adding the sleep element here and then changing the number of seconds here. Right now, the name of the scenario is scenario one, but that's not very descriptive. So I'm going to say SO1 as in scenario one, and then I'll say homepage. This graph is showing what the test is going to look like. Right now, the way it's set up here is that there's going to be a one minute ramp up during which the test will ramp up from zero virtual users up to 20. And then for three minutes and a half, it's going to have a steady state at that 20 virtual user level, and then it'll ramp down for another minute back down to zero. What if we want a different scenario? Well, we can just add a new scenario here. And in the requests here, maybe we want another one where we still go through the same homepage request and it'll have the same URL and even the same check. So let me quickly do that. Body must contain the same phrase. This time I'll add a sleep of two seconds and then add another request. Go back to our site here. Let's go to this news page this time. I'll copy the URL there, head back to K6 and I'll call this news page. Copy the URL back down there. Then I also want to add a new check for this, which will also be something that's contained within the body. Let's look for this phrase in the news. I'm gonna copy that in there and then I'll add another sleep. Now we have two different scenarios, but let's go into options here and name this one properly. So this one will be SO2 news page. So let's say that for this one, we only want it to ramp up to 10. So I'm going to change that here and I still will leave the duration all the same so that they'll ramp up and down automatically. Now you'll see that because we selected 20 virtual users in the first scenario and then 10 virtual users in the second scenario, the summary here up at the top right here now says that this whole test will ramp up to 30 maximum virtual users over the same amount of time, five minutes, 30 seconds. Now let's go back up to the top and go to load zones. In this section, you can determine where your test is going to be run from. Right now, the default is Ashburn, USA, but let's say we wanted to run from Mumbai, India instead. Now the next section is thresholds. A common threshold is response time and we'll probably select across all URLs and let's select the 95th percentile. The condition is a sort of criteria. So in this case, we're going to say that the test's 95th percentile response time should be less than or equal to a thousand milliseconds or one second. Other thresholds that are pretty common are utilization thresholds. So for example, the memory and the CPU of the load generators, it's a good idea to keep an eye on those. So I'm also going to select across all URLs and I'll select value for both. And then I'll say that they should be less than or equal to 80%. Now that's just a nice rule of thumb. Now in this case, I do want to stop the test if the memory or CPU utilization exceeds 80%. So those are our thresholds. Don't worry about Cloud APM for now. We don't need that to run a test. Now let's click save and run. 
looks like our test has started and right here we can see that there's still five minutes remaining of the test. These real-time metrics are really good for being able to see what's happening as they happen. And here's a pro tip, if you want to share these results, you can go over here to the upper right corner with these three dots, click on share test results, and you'll have a URL that you can copy and send to somebody else. Going back to the results here, this gray shaded area is the number of virtual users. So we already knew that we were going to be ramping up from zero to 30, and it looks like that point has passed because we now have 30 virtual users that are active. The blue line is the response time. And then this dark purple line is the request rate. All of these figures are going to change as the test keeps going. We see the two scenarios here. Scrolling down further, we have way more information about the exact URLs that are being executed. Click here to toggle it over to the tree view. And now you can see the URLs per scenario. Going to thresholds here, all three of our thresholds seem to be passing. If we look at checks, the text verifications that we set up seem to be found in 100% of the requests so far. So that's good. Let's wait for this test to finish. All right, our test has finished and this performance overview has now been populated. If we scroll down here, there's a performance insights section. It looks like there weren't any issues that were found in this test, but if there were, they'd be spelled out here with some suggestions for what to do next and steps for troubleshooting it and remediating those issues. Now, all of the same results are going to still be available here, but if we want a different dashboard, we can go to the analysis tab and we can pretty much create any other charts that we want. To do that, we can select add new metric. Let's type in CPU utilization and then have another one perhaps for memory. We can also choose to see these in the same graph. It might look a little cluttered, so let's remove some of these ones and add CPU and memory. You can build the views that you want and explore the results of your test this way. Now we still kicked off this test manually. What if we wanted to run this on a schedule? Well, then we go over to scheduled tests over here. Let's click add schedule and select the test we just ran. We'll click next. So we'll say that it should start tomorrow at 5 p.m. let's say and click repeat save that schedule and there it is. Now I've just shown you a simple way of creating your first K6 load test without doing any scripting and how to schedule it to run your load tests regularly. In the next video, we'll talk about different ways to create a script easily other than the test builder.